You're on. All right. Uh, so my name is Kyle Gilbert. Um, I'm a two-year electrical engineering student at BTC. And uh, I designed a solar charging station with sun tracking, or uh, something's called the, uh, the sunflower solar charger. Um, so just a little intro to my project. Uh, I wanted to create a solar tracker uh, that would follow the sun throughout the day. Um, I wanted to incorporate a solar charger that would efficiently charge from a very small uh, solar panel that would be able to both boost and buck the voltage coming in from it. Um, I wanted to use a USB output because a lot of USB devices aren't really demanding current wise um, and they'd be able to run off of a small power bank. Uh, so for uh, the sun tracking can increase the efficiency of the solar panel by quite a bit. Um, and to move the solar panel, it really didn't take that much power. Um, so the solar, the power bank itself, um, 600 milliamp hour batteries, and it takes an instantaneous burst of 100 milliamps to move it. So it could in theory run a motor for 10 hours on its own, or six hours on its own, uh, but it's just a quick instantaneous burst to get it to move. Um, so the solar panel charges a five volt nickel cadmium battery bank, uh, so no booster buck was needed at the battery bank um, to get it to the USB output. Um, and the five volt power bank is what supplies uh, the motor and the tracking software. Um, right. So this is a uh, system diagram. Um, so I feminized the, uh, the solar cell here. So it's just a seven volt supply with a 70 ohm uh, resistor in series with it. Because I found that in full sunlight, it measures seven volts open circuit and 100 milliamps uh, short circuit. Then I use the LTC uh, 3129, which converts the solar panel's uh, voltage into five volts. Uh, this five volt supply here is uh, just a five volt power bank uh, in parallel with it, which goes into the Arduino, and then to the motor control to run the motor to run the solar tracking. Um, this section up here is an H-bridge configuration that tells the solar panel where the sun is. Um, these two resistors up here are photosensitive resistors. So as they see more sunlight, their resistance goes down, changing the voltage potential between these two points, which are just analog reads into the, uh, into the Arduino. Um, so this is the, uh, the solar panel that I chose. Um, it's just a simple hobby solar panel. Um, I chose it mostly because it was compact in size and it had a pretty good power rating for, uh, for what it was. This is really difficult to read on this slide. Man. Um, so this is the, uh, the configuration that uh, was called out on the data sheet for the LTC 3129. Um, so on the left you have the input and on the right is the output. Everything in between was what was called out for with the exception of this protective diode and the current limiting resistor that I added. Um, so there was a pretty simple uh, equation for coming up with an output for this chip. And it was just 1.175 times 1 plus R7 over R8. So I selected resistors that would give me a 5.3 volt output. Uh, this output would both overcome the, uh, the diode that I have and produce five volts to charge the batteries. And the protective diode prevents it from charging too quickly because um, ni nickel cadmium batteries can be sensitive to that. Um, and this chip uh, is up to 95% efficient. And as I said before, it can both do boost and buck. So it can boost the voltage if it's anywhere between 2.5 to 5 volts and it'll give you a max of 100 milliamps output. 
and then if it goes anywhere from the five volts to seven volts, which is the maximum I can measure on that solar panel, um, it would give you 200 milliamps output. Uh, this is after I soldered everything together. So one of the problems I had was the only package that chip came in was insanely tiny, so I had to learn how to solder using the oven, which was kind of interesting. Um, and I had to buy this breakout board for it. Um, as you can see here, this is the input and the output terminals uh, for the chip. So, uh, for the sun tracking, I used an Arduino Uno. Um, I used the Arduino Uno because I was already familiar with the software used um, in the programming language. Um, in addition to that, I used this uh, Motor Shield, which is able to, uh, it came with its own language, which made it easy to run the motor both forwards and backwards uh, with just some simple commands. So the Uno, when it's not in deep sleep mode, draws 30 milliamps, um, which is quite a bit. But when you use the proper commands, you can put the Arduino into a deep sleep, so it only draws about 5 to 10 milliamps, um, which can run for more than a day with no sunlight um, coming from the battery bank. Uh, this is the code that's currently running on the Arduino. Um, this is not the code that would be on the final product, but this is the code that will quickly track the sun. So, as you can see in value one and value two, all it does is it takes an analog read from that H bridge, um, that was in the system diagram earlier, and then value three is it takes the absolute value of one minus the other. So, what it does is if value three is less than 20, and since it's just an analog read, you get a value between 0 and 1023. Um, if it's less than 20, it'll delay for 50 milliseconds. So in act when the final product is here, it will go into a deep sleep at that point, and it'll wait for an hour. And then all it is is an else if condition, and if it comes down here and if value 1 is greater than value 2, then it turns the motor to the right. And then if value one is greater than value two, it'll turn to the left. Um, and I set the speed pretty much as slow as the motor shield would let me and actually have the motor move. Um, but when, like let's say the sun first comes up in the morning, if it's pointed too far away, it'll quickly run through the code several times and just continuously turn it until this condition is satisfied. And then it'll wait. So I used four uh, 1.2 volt nickel cadmium batteries, um, which produces a perfect five volts when they're fully charged. Um, and as I said, there are 600 milliamp hours, and since they're all placed in the series, that is, um, that is what you get with the output. And it's capable of keeping the Arduino in sleep mode uh, for more than a day without sunlight input. Uh, so for social, ethical, environmental, um, obviously this more counts for the uh, environmental as it produces free electricity uh, from a renewable source. Um, using nickel cadmium batteries, I found them to be pretty sturdy. Uh, they're capable of 2,000 cycles before they need to be recycled. So the issues I had in design was I had one chip um, totally burn out on me in testing. I put 10 volts at the input, which was well within what it called for from the benchtop power supply. But for whatever reason, it shorted every input one with the other. Um, so I'm still having issues putting the Uno to bed with the watchdog timer, they call it. Um, the watchdog timer will completely turn off everything on the Arduino board and it runs an internal clock on the chip. Um, for some reason I can get the program to run on its own, but I can't get it to run with my program. Um, so
So case design problems, a lot of which I've, I've overcome at this point, but it's tough to get all of the weird shaped parts into a nice, neat case and have it cradle the motor the way it needs to. Um, in my original plan, I wanted to use a lithium ion power bank, but the chip doesn't produce enough current to make the lithium ion bank think that it's charging. So what would happen with the lithium ion bank would just say it's already a full charge because it wasn't giving enough current. Any questions? Switching voltage regulator slide. Mm -hmm. um, you said you set the output to 5.3 volts. Yep. And that was enough to overcome the diode. I can't really tell what kind of diode you have. What, what are you using? Oh, it was a, it was a shocky diode. Okay. And did you actually measure it? Um, and, and did you measure it working? Is there really like five volts after the shock key? Or yes. Okay. Yep. All right. okay. Open circuit was 5.3, but when the current was running. Was uh, under high current loads, shot keys can go up to 0.4, so I didn't know where you were. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, and and you, sorry. You mentioned on the motor slide that the motor board came with its own language. Did you mean it came with a library? Library, yes. Okay. Yeah. You were going to say? Um, I do have a demonstration. Um, if we could just turn off uh, this overhead light. cell phone flashlight as the sun, but <laughs> all right, so all right, so as we saw before, um, once the condition is satisfied that it's at a good point facing the sun, it'll just go and dwell. So right now, the program is just going into dwell over and over again. But as it senses a difference, it'll position the solar panel so it points directly at the sun. So once the program is finished, it will, once the condition is satisfied, it won't be checking over and over again because it will be in sleep mode. This is more of a demonstration of how it's going to work throughout the day, because the sun doesn't move as fast as my son. All right. All right. Good. Yeah. Thank you.